She had developed an interest in the prison system and in prisoners and what happens to prisoners when they leave prison. And she saw an opportunity to make their lives better. And as a result, although some people couldn't see it, as a result, make society better. It may have been one of his most significant and courageous appointments in his years as Louisiana's governor, anointing a 47-year-old woman, a pioneer in many ways, to head Louisiana's Department of Corrections. Her name, Elaine Hunt. The year was 1972. Hunt, a mother of four and one of the first females to practice criminal law in the state, was now in charge of Louisiana's notorious system of prisons. We had bad national press about the horrible conditions in Angola, and they were horrible. Uh, she changed a lot of the rules up there. She, um, she let them have some individuality. And one of the big issues that she really drummed on was decentralization. At that time, Angola was the only, max, well, the only major prison in the state. And she wanted to have prisons located throughout the state, smaller prisons, closer to people who could come visit the offenders, with more programs for vocation, rehabilitation, not just working in the fields and, and you know, breaking bricks and that sort of thing. Uh, she very much was enc you know, encouraged that. While Elaine Hunt was making inroads within the prison population, eliminating infamous cell blocks at Angola, demanding better food, allowing for some personal freedoms like longer hair, requesting more money for guards, she was not endearing herself to legislators who controlled the purse strings. But as pioneers often do, Elaine wasn't afraid to go after what she believed was right and just. Getting money appropriated uh, for the Department of Corrections was extremely difficult. I mean, there's no constituency for those people to speak of except those few bleeding heart liberals. And um, plus the legislature had in their mind that this was a farm. It was a working farm, 18,000 acres in Angola, that it ought to be self-sufficient. She tried to make many reforms uh, and I think accomplished a good deal. But I do not forget that without the backing of the governor, of course she couldn't have done it. But he always gave her his full support. John Iker, Elaine's husband of 27 years, fully supported Elaine in whatever she did. The two met in the late 40s while Elaine was writing for the State Times and John was working for a radio station. She was uh, working for the newspaper here in Baton Rouge, and I was involved in uh, a situation that she did a story on, and it was not very flattering, I'm afraid, to me, or at least I didn't think it was. So the first time I was introduced to her, my first words to her were, damn you. And then things got a lot better, and two years later, we got married. It was John who actually convinced Elaine to practice law. She and Mary Bird Perkins were the only two women in their class at LSU Law. Prior to that, Elaine honed her writing and critical thinking skills, first as the student editor for the Daily Reveille, and then as a crime reporter for the Baton Rouge State Times newspaper. We worked together, and, and uh, she was a very vigorous, outgoing, hardworking girl. She, she really knew how to throw herself into a job and, and do a good, hard job. She was. Uh, very, very active and very vigorous, vigorous in her work. That vigor led her to cover stories never before assigned to a female reporter. Little did Elaine know the impact her coverage would have on statewide prison policy years later. Eventually, this pioneer witnessed a total of five executions in Louisiana's electric chair. But at that time, the electric chair in Louisiana was moved to the parish where the crime was committed. Whether it was witnessing the executions, practicing criminal defense law for two decades with her partner John Covington, or her years covering crime for the newspaper, Elaine Hunt was undoubtedly determined to make positive changes for those who were less fortunate, those that in her mind, through little fault of their own, had been disregarded by society. You know, she would recognize that people sometimes are born on the wrong side of the tracks. and. And, uh, and to treat them harshly, particularly coming out of prison. I mean, it's one of the reasons why she so emphasized uh, rehabilitation type programs in the prisons, because she said, you know, these folks are gonna be coming back out. So I mean, forget about idealism, let's just be pragmatic. She was a tough lady, but she had a kind heart. And she understood that being in prison is not only a punishment, but it's an opportunity to make a better life for yourself when you get out. 
While raising her children and working, Hunt also took an interest in supporting numerous civic and charitable organizations, always stressing the importance of giving back to the community. Her activism allowed her to meet many local and national dignitaries, including Presidents Truman, Kennedy, and Johnson, as well as conservative William F. Buckley, to name just a few. It also landed her the coveted role as a voting delegate in the 1956 Democratic National Convention. While hosting guests was second nature to Elaine and well publicized in periodicals such as In Register, it was just as likely that she would open her doors to the less fortunate, the homeless, or even addicts, because she felt compelled to offer a hand up. She was always involved in doing something for someone. Hunt only served as director of the Louisiana Department of Corrections for about three and a half years before her untimely death in 1976. But her mark, her reforms, her legacy, and most notably her pioneering spirit continue today not only within the state's prisons, but across the state as a whole. It needed to be done. It was just uh, not right to have such primitive conditions in, in uh, no other state in the country had such primitive conditions in the correction system. Iron and empathy was not a term that was used then, but, it's, but it certainly is one that, that describes her. I mean, she was very strong-willed, but on the other hand, had more compassion than any person I've met in my entire life. For her journalism experience, her legal experience, and her representation of uh, inmates and prisoners, made her uniquely suited for the job which she agreed to take, even though it was controversial and very time consuming. But she did a good job, and I tell you, her death was a real blow to the system. She loved journalism. As I say, it was her first love. She loved journalism, and she was a great journalist. And uh, so I think it's great. I think it's great, a good tribute and, and well earned. Elaine Hunt. 2012 inductee into the LSU Manship School of Mass Communication Hall of Fame.